All right, uh, welcome everyone for joining. Uh, thank you for, for coming. Uh, as usual, the meetings are recorded, so uh, everybody who's, who's not here can, uh, can see. Um, there's a pretty exciting meeting because we're going to be talking about uh, all the proposals that we've received uh, from people for funding um, from Purple. It's a lot of, lot of really exciting and interesting stuff to improve OpenWRT. Um, uh, so I'm not going to talk too much longer. I will actually uh, let the, um, the uh, proposers uh, talk about their proposals. Um, so uh, who would like to go first? I can go first. This is Niels. Okay. Since Niels. everyone's uh, <laughs> seems eager about being first. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, I'll try to share my screen. Um, let's see if that works. Oh, I have to promote you. I've you've been promoted, I think. Okay. Um, share screen. Okay, does that work? Yep. I can see it. Brilliant. Awesome. Okay. Um, topic is uh, safe power by disabling wireless networks. Um, I'll just give a very quick introduction about who I am. I'm a freelance software developer. Um, currently working or long time project is working for Lenovo um, with SAP Solutions. Um, I went down to the basement this afternoon and picked up my very first open WRT router and put a picture here. Um, so I think that was about 12 years ago when I first came in touch with that project. Um, I mainly use it as a um, user. I'm not very much into developing uh, on OpenWRT. I did some stuff with the build uh, environment years ago, um, but since this is not my main focus, I actually like to use um, what other people have done. Um, yeah, I have a strong background of Linux, networks, shell scripting, Python and C and that stuff. Um, some uh, personal stuff, I'm 35 years old, uh, I'm married, have two kids, so that gives you a, a bit of idea how much time I have for some uh, community projects. Um, about the idea I have, um, you are aware that the wireless networks are turned on all the time and are sending out their beacons all the time. And maybe, I mean, that's very convenient because, I mean, all the time you come there with your computer, you show up, you connect, you uh, can use it very nice. Um, but on the other hand, maybe it's not even necessary to be turned on all the time. So, for instance, for, an, for a normal company, you could think of business hours between, I don't know, 7 in the morning to 9 at night, and, and, and outside these hours, it's very rarely used. So what about some mechanism, or how about a, you could define a switch or business hours in which you want to have the wireless network turned on guaranteed. And outside these business hours, you have a mechanism that looks at associated stations. And if there is no, sta uh, no client associated, um, you take action and you disable um, the wireless network. Um, now, why would you exactly want to do that? I mean, um, you lose this um, convenience. Um, but on the other hand, I did some measurements yesterday with my uh, TP-Link uh, router uh, running OpenWRT, and I save roughly about one watt by just turning off the Wi-Fi. Um, now, if I sum that up and if I assume, okay, let's, turn it off eight hours during night, um, that would save roughly 2.9 kilowatt hours per year. 
which is about 1.6 kilograms of CO2 emissions. So I think that would be a first step towards becoming more green. Um, so I, I would personally really like to have that feature and I would use it. Uh, um, of course, you would need a, a button to turn it on in case you need wireless. Um, I did a little research on how to implement that. Um, you could just pull the um, associated stations with a, I would say, a cron job should be fine, and then compare it to your business hours, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't want to go much too much into detail here. And, of course, you would need to have a UI element where you can um, set the business hours and, and turn the, the whole feature on. Um, I did some thinking about, okay, how long would it take for me to implement that and how much time I would see for the specific parts. Um, I think within one week, eight hours of work, I should get a first command line prototype running. Um, within another 10 hours, uh, I would get a UI prototype running. I put some more hours in there because I, I, I'm not so familiar with the UI of open of developing for the UI on, on OpenWRT. And then in a third step, I would see the whole integration, putting the things together, testing it, documenting it. So that's another 16 hours. And of course, this feature would only be really useful if I could put it upstream in the OpenWRT repository so I see some more work maybe there depending on, on how, how smooth that goes. So that brings me to a total of 42 hours and I think within five weeks that should be possible. So are there any questions? Yeah, Niels. Um, I think it's I think it's a it's a, it's a it's a cool proposal. It's it's very straightforward, but it's it's certainly a problem that that I'm sure people are having. Um, one one thing, when you say you were going to put it into the upstream OpenWRT, did you, do you have you considered whether you whether it should go in the feeds or um, or OpenWRT core? I think it might fit in feeds, but I I'm not. 100% sure I would I don't see why it wouldn't but uh, to be honest I haven't put any any much thinking of that I mean by upstream I, I mean just putting it somewhere so it's so it's there you know <laughs> so it's available okay yeah, um, I yeah so it's I think it's not very useful if it's just on on a, a some web page where someone would need to download it um, if he wants it, so um, yeah. But I, I don't have. I mean, it's it's a small thing, and I when I looked yesterday at the repo, I think it could go into a module um, within Lucy. Um, mm -hmm. But to be honest, I'm this this answer is uh, this question is still open. I, I don't have an, a, an answer to that. Okay. Are there any other questions? I'm just curious, um, how did you like become aware of this problem? <laughs> uh, I mean, there is a, a very popular router in Germany, which is called the Fritzbox. And um, this router offers this feature. So they put some thinking uh, into energy efficiency and you can do exactly the very precise thing, define business hours and outside of those um, it's turned off the wireless LAN. And they have a nice feature since the Fritzbox is integrated with phone also. Um, you can dial a, f a number on your phone to 
turn on or disable the wireless. So that's a very neat thing in case you wake up late, uh, during the night and you find out, okay, I would like to browse something <laughs> on my computer or on my iPad or whatever. Um, you can just turn it on via phone, whereas now the the recommendation which I have for OpenWRT, of course, you can't use the phone. You would need some computer that is connected uh, to the LAN, and from there you could, over the, the web interface, could enable it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So All right. Stop sharing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nails. It's a great, great presentation, and and thanks for uh, for uh, letting us uh, understand your proposal. Uh, who would like to go next? Um, I can go next if you want to. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Definitely. Let me let me share my screen quick. Um, and uh, there we go. Um, let me go full screen. Um, well, it's mostly full screen. Um, there we go. Can everyone see that? Yeah, I can see. Awesome. Yes. Okay, so my name is Felix, and I think I probably don't need to waste a lot of your time on introducing myself. So if you've if you're familiar with OpenWRT, you've most likely seen quite a few parts of my work uh, since I've designed a large part of the core infrastructure that we're using. And uh, my proposal that I, that I bring for today is a new TR69 implementation that's specifically designed for OpenWRT and to integrate well with it. Um, next slide, please. No, that's... That one, yes. So it's designed for OpenWRT, and uh, naturally it makes a use of a lot of the core technologies that we've developed over time, like the, the core libraries that almost all of our uh, main components use, and which include libuvox for just standard, uh, the standard C utilities. Of course, it connects to UBus, which uh, it uses to communicate with the rest of the system. What I forgot to put in there is that it also uses UCI as a configuration backend, and it uses uh, the more recent developments for uh, uh, HTTP client support uh, with SSL that we've actually put in, in the default configuration right now. And the, the nice thing about uh, this piece of software, the way that it's, that it's being built right now, I actually have a proof of concept somewhere already, just needs some polishing is that it doesn't use any non-core packages aside from just libro XML, which is something like 17 kilobyte compressed. So, and the package itself is very small as well. So even if you build small scale routers, you can easily fit in TR69 support in there. Uh, and it, it'll work with pretty much any standard uh, uh, flash and RAM constraints that you can use with OpenWRT. And one of the main design goals that I had with this code is to make it as extensible as possible. Because when you look at the TR69 and the TR181 spec, there's a lot of objects and a lot of parameters uh, that need to be implemented. And you don't want to have to have C experts or people that are very familiar with the core go through each and every one of those options in the spec that you need and write some dedicated code for that. So I built a kind of abstraction layer that makes this very easy that most of the parameters that you add, you don't actually need to write any code at all. You can just tell it to what part in the system it maps and it'll figure out everything uh, on its own. So uh, next slide, please. So, here are some of the design considerations that were important to me. So the, the actual binding of the TR69 and TR181 models to the configuration part is simply JSON data. 
I made this structured in a way that you can you can describe objects, you can even describe multi-instance objects, which you have in the spec, where you you kind of have a, a pattern that says this is uh, you have network interface objects here, and they they are numbered and uh, they refer to actual network interfaces on the device, and you can just use JSON data to describe like how to get a list of active interfaces, what kind of variables you need to, to access those interfaces and what parameters you have. And it's even structured in a very extensible way that you, you can actually build packages that simply add extra tier 69 parameters uh, for, uh, that are specific to that package. And it's all very modular. And the other important consideration in design is uh, to not actually limit the whole thing to TR69 itself. A large part of the, the code that I'm writing or that I've written already is completely generic and completely reusable for TR69. It could be used for SNMP, it could be used for NetConf, because there are so many different kinds of protocols that we may want to support in the future. And it's good to have a common infrastructure that makes this whole mapping part easy. So actually, all of the parts that deal with adjacent data and that uh, export the whole thing to, to the, the particular management system, that's all in the reusable backend core, all the interpreter code and everything for that. So you can, uh, you, you can see that this is, this is a very easy way to, to integrate the whole thing in OpenWRT because you don't need to worry so much about what libraries you can link to or what components on the system you can talk to. You just write some JSON that does some UBUS calls or you write JSON that maps to UCI parameters and it'll figure out the rest by itself. And another important factor for the separation is uh, TR69 is a, is a somewhat complex protocol and uh, while I'm very careful in the code that I write, there might of course be bugs that could be security related. And with the architecture that I put in here, uh, you, you could actually do privilege separation and isolation so that everything that actually talks to the remote side can be isolated in a way that it never has any direct access to the system. All it does is talk to the back end and pass parameters back and forth, and that limits the attack surface to a large degree. If you go to the next slide, you can see the, the basic architecture that I, that I built for this. Uh, I marked this, the scope of the project that I would like to see funded here, which is the main configuration back and some of the data models, uh, or at least the infrastructure for them that we're going to use for TR69 and the front end that does the actual proto, uh, protocol work, because that's, that's basically all you need to be able to integrate an OpenWRT CPE in, into that kind of network. And as you see, the, the configuration backend itself is the connection point uh, that allows these protocol front ends with the data models to talk to the system. So if you hook up NetConf, if you hook up SNMP, they won't have to deal with the actual TR69 specific parts. They can just hook up directly in the configuration backend and use that as a means to talk to the rest of the system through those JSON files. Uh, so um, please go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So then I also thought about what are the important factors for building a community around this, this project and integrating it properly. Um, as I said before, I'm, I, my focus has been to make it generic for, for other protocols as well, such as SNMP and NetConf, because while TR69 matters now, I've already talked to a few ISPs who are already working on uh, moving to, to NetCon, for instance, or at least looking into the possibility of doing that. Because the tier 69 spec itself and, and the data models built on top of that, they are quite quirky and antiquated in, in some regards. And I've actually found some parameters where they are so uh, underspecified that there is actually no way to implement them properly. So people typically work around that by using vendor specific objects and parameters. Um, but in general, I think uh, uh, since uh, the, the, the NetCon protocol is specified as an RFC and is a lot closer to something that can be used as a, as a real standard, 
they are looking into alternatives as well. And I think any infrastructure that's being being built now should at least have some some focus on on making sure that uh, that we're future compatible. And another concern that I frequently heard from uh, communities that are deploying uh, some, maybe not as large numbers as ISPs, but still significant numbers of devices, they also want to uh, have some infrastructure for managing their devices, but their needs are, are not really met by TR69 as a protocol, because it's really pretty much specific to an ISP type of environment where you have that, that one configuration server, that one cluster of configuration servers that has to talk to all these devices. And there might be a, a need to do something that's a little more decentralized. And I think it would be a pretty good idea to have the infrastructure to be able to prototype that and build that in, in a lot easier way. And to actually get developers involved that currently have no interest in TR69 and get them to the point where they can make contributions that will also be suitable for the TR69 implementation because they improve the general core of the system. So overall, I, I pay close attention to make sure that we can bridge the gap between the needs of, of the big carriers and the communities because essentially we want to have both working together anyway. And this, I think this proposal could, could be the de facto device management infrastructure for, for OpenWRT. Uh, upon which a lot of other things can be built later. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Felix. Um, I guess I'll, I'll start. Um, one one question. You, you said that um, uh, that uh, I know in your proposal you originally had said there, there's very little that goes into core, and most of it. Um, goes into a package which i can kind of understand with the way you described it i mean yeah. how, can, can you give me a sense of how big is the stuff that goes into core and um an, you, you know have you have you heard that there's interest in it in you know in core that from others that you know this is something that we would really like well so because that's two questions but that would, that i would put in the core is uh, is extremely trivial the only thing that i would put in there is to have a hook that if uh, the device connects via DHCP and it receives um, in, the, in the DHCP reply uh, an information of uh, that there's an, uh, a TR69 ACS somewhere, that it then triggers some other action to put that in the configuration. Like that's the only thing that really needs to be in the core. Everything else works as a package that you can simply put into the image and. Uh, it doesn't need any further changes to the system. Okay, and, and when you say you say TR sixty nine, if they had some other, um, like device controller uh, registered, if it got a if it received a message from say a netconf thing, that it would that hook would verify it there. Um, I know that that hook is actually uh, TR sixty nine specific, okay. uh, because that's just how the standard specifies that an ACS can be discovered. Okay. Um, with <laughs> I see. Uh, other protocols, there might be other ways to discover that. Some of them might work without core changes. Some of them might work with core changes. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because any core change that we need, uh, there's an easy way to get that in. Okay. Yeah. It, it does sound very minor. Okay. Um, hey, other Felix, I, have a, I have a quick question. It sounds like you're able to leverage a lot of software development you've done in the past. Is that software you're leveraging, is that already in OpenWT or is that part of the work that you have to add pieces or elements or? Uh, well, the, the stuff that's there, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's in a proof of concept stage <clears throat> and it's already being tested. It's not in OpenWRT. It's not out in the open yet. It's uh, built uh, as part of the company that I work with. And once okay. it's, once it's getting some funding from somewhere, it'll be opened up immediately and then further developed out in the open. Oh, that sounds really good. Thanks. Great. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, I have some questions. Yeah. Let me first maybe introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dirk Vetons. Uh, I'm actually working for Technicolor. So I'm a colleague of uh, Hans de Decker and Jos Delbar. 
So ah, you may, yeah. might know those names. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so yeah, I'm software developer and I am working on our tier 69 implementation. So uh, that's why I'm in this meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm, of course, very interested in the direction that you guys are going. Um, I see uh, the high-level architecture looks a bit similar to what we have implemented in our devices. Um, so, well, looks interesting for me, uh, although maybe one remark from experience, we know that the S69 is quite complex um, and data models are not as simple as they might seem. Um, so there are maybe some questions more technical that uh, we might want to go over here. Um, in short, maybe I can say that Technical is interested in this work and we are evaluating on how we can contribute here. Uh, nothing is defined yet, uh, but we are discussing this internally. So we are closely following this up and you might hear from us soon again then. <laughs> that would be great. That's great. That, that's great to hear. Yeah, but there seems to be a lot of interest in TR69 for what it sounds like. From yeah. yeah, I think, well, from our experience, most of the vendors are, are asking for TR69 because it's the de facto management uh, channel for them. Uh, although, like you said, alternatives are welcome. <laughs> they are looking <laughs> for alternatives. Um, but still, it, it's the one thing that is actually uh, proven and working. Um, although complex, um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I can understand if we can converge on, on one solution for OpenWRT, that's uh, beneficial. Eric, this is Art. I'm just mm -hmm. curious if you mentioned uh, Waitex proposal. Yeah, I, I had talked about it a little bit before the meeting. Uh, we also uh, got an email yesterday um, uh, that from uh, a new member of Purple Soft at Home, and they offered to open source their TR69 implementation. Um, don't know the de don't know all the details, but it, it's very interesting. So there does seem to be a lot of uh, interest in this area, at the very least. And it's kind of uh, funny that it's all it's kind of all coming together at the same time. So. Um, this would, it seems like this would be a great place for people to collaborate a lot on this. And we're going to have another proposal as well uh, later in this call on Tier 69. Great, thanks. Yep, no problem. Definitely. Any other questions for Felix? All right. Thank you, Felix. Great presentation. Very interesting proposal, and uh, we really appreciate Good. it. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Maybe I can go next now in the tier zero sixty nine topic. Yeah. So, let, let, yeah. Let's let's get all our tier sixty nine stuff done at yeah. once. <clears throat> okay. Which so? Uh, which page did you want me to go to? Forty eight or something like that. Forty six. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me start by giving a short introduction. Although today I'm wearing uh, my company's hat, Arturas. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about uh, the company and the project and uh, the thing we would like to achieve. And it makes me happy that there is so much interest in, in TR069 since we started this work like a couple of years back and maybe now is much better time to move forward with it on advanced level. So um, basically what we did in the past, we did the free CWMP, which was the first uh, GPLV2 licensed uh, TR069 client. Um, and in that process, I've learned uh, a lot of lessons, so like what the vendors actually want to do, what are their goals. Uh, I also learned a lot of how, how vendors don't know how to collaborate on the open source projects. I also learned um, a lot of technical details as well. For example, some of all of the technical things that uh, free CWMP is lacking 
we, we are aiming to fix in this new implementation, Rocket CWMP. And uh, this is bigger project than I would say just uh, technical implementation because in my opinion and in my experience, I think uh, for this kind of project that there needs to be a bigger collaboration between all the companies involved or all the interested parties. So Felix did mention uh, some other management protocols before, like, like uh, NetConf, right? So this is different kind of management protocol and we also did implementation for that. Uh, it's called uh, free NetConf, obviously like free, free CWMP, we, we also have free NetConf. And there are some other um, interesting developments in management area uh, on that front as well. But for TR069, I would say that this is something that is uh, actual today and uh, nobody, in my opinion, uses TR069 for fun, or if they like it or love this protocol. They mainly use it because they have to, because their customers require them to use TR069. TR069 uh, has a lot of parameters, so maybe some feedback from Technicolor would be also good here because you are guys on the call, but although there are like thousands and thousands of parameters in the real life, there is not so much of those used um, in production. Mm -hmm. is, would that be a fair sta statement? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I can say that we also do not implement everything from the spec because it's simply too much. Uh, the problem is that yeah, every vendor uses a slightly different set of parameters. <laughs> yeah, and you and you also have uh, it's always interesting to see in the spec when you have uh, an option to override the uh, parameters by adding uh, vendor specific parameters and stuff like that so that's 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 how it is but in a nutshell in my experience like uh, typically vendor uses between uh, ISP sorry ISP uses between 20 up to 50 the most parameters that they are most interested in these are like um, managing uh, PPP, for example, managing uh, SIP, uh, managing Wi-Fi, and few other things. Um, and those things are different. Uh, well, okay, if we go with SIP, that is different from device to device. So, for example, if you have a Broadcom-based device uh, and you have your own uh, SIP implementation, the way you configure it is much different than you would do with some other implementation from Lantic or some other vendor. So in this uh, design, uh, what I've envisioned that we have like a um, stable uh, core, Rocket CWMP core, which is able to load plugins um, written in C. And uh, these plugins then are able to extend the functionality of the TR069 tree. So this is similar to what was already done in the free CWMP, but it solves uh, quite a few technical problems for starters, better error handling and uh, having, um, how to say, uh, much better performance. So, but let me, let me just back up a bit because in this um, picture here, what I really think it's really important to do for this kind of a project is to sit down and talk with everybody who are interested in this kind of a solution, because let's write down this requirement. Let's see what is really needed. Let's uh, figure out uh, how to organize this together and work on this project to make it like successful. So I also put uh, here one month of time because it will go uh, sometime it will also pass until we contact the ACS vendors and uh, try to ask them to uh, participate in this project. And so we can also do the interoperability testing, which I think is very important to, to do because in production, if you have a device and you want to sell it to the ISP, they will uh, most likely ask you if you have some interoperability tests. So I think it's important that uh, as a project, we have this like confirmation that the implementation is good uh, with all major uh, vendors. 
So after that, like uh, we kick off or continue where, where we are at this moment. And that is uh, four months of development time where we were thinking and designing this uh, infrastructure to fin finalize, make it bug free, set it up on uh, proper, at the proper way so people can easily contribute, make a build boots, uh, make a testing infrastructure, make a testing ACS, which can uh, send easily messages, which, and make it really easy for somebody to test the client. Because testing this implementation, <clears throat> while it's easy, uh, there is no infrastructure at the moment that I'm aware of to make it uh, like easily doable. So when we have all that core done, then I would like to move to the extension development and develop these, these extensions, which are most um, important for the community at this point in time. And with this uh, approach of having uh, extensions, one also important problem is solved. And that is uh, you enable vendors easily to introduce whatever changes they want without impacting the <coughs> core system and keeping it uh, stable. So this is something that uh, I think a lot of vendors will appreciate because it allows them to um, keep their own stuff in-house if they cannot share due to legal reasons or don't want to or just want to get things done quickly and then later uh, as the time goes by they can clean up the code and uh, release it if they want to and also it's really important to have like good documentation and uh, have everything tested so one last month of this uh, development time i have like only dedicated to these efforts because if we don't teach everybody how to use this properly uh, and do some promotion and stuff like that. I think this is, this is something that only a few people will know about and this is not good for a community or a project mm -hmm. as a whole. So my idea was to get this out and uh, have purple there to like push it and show to others how to do it. Now, this is a high level overview and this is something that uh, can be implemented in this project or can be implemented in others. And um, in a nutshell, that would be it. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Luca. Um, uh, are, are there any questions? All right. Um, I, I guess uh, this is maybe a question for uh, everyone, but it, it made me think of this as we're talking about this. There's the um, TR69 uh, client. Uh, are, are there open source TR69 servers? Or um, Yeah, so there are okay. some TR069 open source servers, um, I would say. Okay. This is not something that you would like to use if you have a lot of devices you want to manage. Also, in mm -hmm. the work we did with TR069, so we did a proof of concept stage TR069 server because we needed it for mainly for testing and for other things as well. Um, we also did um, Nginx proxy, uh, proxy module for mm -hmm. CWMP because in um, our work, uh, being involved for with TR069 for a long time, we found out like several security issues with uh, CWMP, which are not a uh, problem of CWMP protocol itself. It's more of um, how you deploy TR069 in your network. So some of this, some of this work, um, I don't like to share public because. Uh, it can cause real harm to the operators. But uh, there was this um, uh, Israeli company who did some further work on this. And then uh, they also discovered that you can do all sorts of nasty things if you like manage to, let's call it, hijack uh, the ACS in the Internet Service Providers Network. Because mm -hmm. TR069 is 
literally connected to the billing system, to the databases where your credentials are stored, to everything. So okay. having this done properly is very important for the ISP, I would think. Yeah. Okay. All right. And one more thing. So mm -hmm. this is not a project that um, typical hackers will use, right? This is mostly something that um, companies will use and ISPs. So in our experience, it's really important when you do some project like this, that you have a company or a vendor to which you can go to and get professional support, uh, have trainings, education, um, development, uh, those kind of typical B2B services which are needed for this kind of a project. And this is something that we do already and uh, can do in the future for these kind of projects. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? No. Maybe I can add from experience that the 69 is yeah quite complex. So do not underestimate the kind of effort you need to spend to make an implementation that is carrier grade, eh, as they call it. Um, because we know from experience, a lot of work needs to be done to get it really up and running for, for all different ISPs. Eh? Um, so just a warning. Uh, you have to start somewhere, but I don't know if, uh, if I see here six months. I'm not sure if you have yeah, what the status will be of, of the result at that stage. Um, yeah, we already but... it's it's written in the document. So we already have like uh, four main months invested in this. Mm -hmm. And we did this uh, sometime in the last year. But due to some other projects that kicked in, uh, we put this on a side. And when we seen this purple funding proposal, we saw like, okay, this is something that we could do. This is something that could be interesting. And uh, decided to write up uh, this proposal and documentation. I mean, we are well aware of this complexity. Uh, yeah. We okay. already have the implementation, uh, one in the open. It was forked a couple of times. We got a different kind of feedback. Uh, we did also, like I said, the ACS. We did also the uh, Nginx proxy module. So, yeah, it's not an easy task to, to do this properly. And it's important to do this properly because uh, if this goes down and your ISP cannot reach your box, then he needs to send uh, somebody to that uh, address. And there goes yeah. down the profit for ISP for this customer for the next year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I actually um, wanted to share my experience with this as well because the like the proof of concept is now far enough along that we actually we're testing interoperability with uh, real world ACS that actually get used by ISPs like for instance the Axiros uh, ACS. And I found that uh, in, in some ways, yes, TR69 is, is complex, at least, well, the data model is, is very complex in many places. I found that while working on the core, uh, many things have actually been a lot easier than I anticipated. Um, it's, it depends. Some, some areas probably still need, need some work, like the... the um, supporting environments where the router is behind NAT, for instance, is a complex area that, that mm -hmm. uh, will need quite a bit of work. But I've, I found the, the actual core protocol to be easier than I expected. Yeah, it's, it's mostly in the error case handling, that kind of stuff. Yes, definitely. That, 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 that part is complex, definitely. And ACS is that are not entirely following the spec. Uh, <laughs> that can also <laughs> yeah. sometimes be problematic and you have to add exceptions and so on. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you have to deal with in the real world. Yeah. I think the, the good thing about these different, uh, different proposals and about what, uh, what we got from, uh, what was his name? For, for, from the other company that, uh, that wants to, yeah, soft at home. I think the good thing about these proposals is every single proposal here uh, brings 
something unique in solving this problem. And I think uh, if, if we combine these things, uh, I think the end result will be very good. I, I, I would agree completely. Um, it, and also the folks at Technicolor, clearly this is, there, there's a lot of, lot of great minds who are very interested in this topic and willing to work on it and, and have lots of experience. So definitely. All right. Um, well, I have one more question. So yeah. one of the things that I wanted to do with this Rocket CWMP is also not make it so open WRT dependent because mm -hmm. this is software that you can easily run on setup box or any kind of uh, ISP uh, appliance that they want to manage in the home. Mm -hmm. So maybe a question for you guys is like, uh, do you like only use open WRT uh, or you use some other, uh, we can call it legacy distributions or uh, do you see a value in having something not so tied in open WRT or, or how does it work in, within your company? If you can share it publicly, that is. Uh, well, um, I think, well, our implementation is set up to be fairly platform agnostic. Mm -hmm. And it is, our code has been used internally in the company for other devices that do not run OpenWRT. Um, so yes, for us, it has proven to be valuable. Um, of course, yeah, that's a bit of a different situation. Uh, here we're talking about OpenWRT, but I think if you can make it such that it's not very tightly coupled to OpenWRT specifics, that for sure it will make the, the, the implementation reach a wider audience and does get more eyes and, and code and, and bug fixes and so on. So I think, I think in general, it's a, it's a trade-off because yeah. uh, if you, uh, if you work, I mean, there, there are now quite a few existing TR69 implementations. Many companies are building their own. And I think in, in some ways, um, if you have a system that is as tightly integrated as OpenWRT, I think for such a system, it makes sense to have an implementation that actually makes use of that because what you gain is... Uh, simplicity of the overall system and i think in in many software development projects uh, the number one enemy is complexity mm -hmm. and i think there's there's definitely value in having both because having an approach where it's it's integrated and where the integration actually takes a lot of complexity out of the system um, that is also a good way to avoid a whole classes of bugs and to speed up the process of bringing up a new device. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm starting to think that we should like have purple uh, TR069 like committee, like we have a <laughs> committee, that we have TR069 committee as well, and do, I, do some debating. I would actually agree that I think that's a very good idea. I don't, what do you think, Art? Maybe Art's not in the call anymore, because um, it is pretty. We've gone pretty far. Sorry, sorry, oh, there. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> no, I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, and then we could get uh, our new member soft at home. We could get uh, Technicolor. We could get the other interested parties. I think it'd be great. Definitely, because because I, I think everyone's bringing up really good points that there's value in it being reusable uh, across platform, but there's also value in it you know, it really fits into OpenWRT for that use case. So, you know, you kind of pick and choose which is best and then see where the overlap is that people can um, reuse as much as possible between the two. So I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. Um, I think we, we'll have to talk about that after this meeting, certainly. Mm -hmm. We should probably move on, though, to the to the next few presentations because so we don't take too much of people's time. I hate to I hate to cut this off, but yeah, I think we're going to have to talk about that some more because I think it's a great idea. That's awesome. Thank you, Luca, by the way. Th thank you for Definitely. the opportunity to present yeah. this. And uh, I'm really happy that uh, this topic 
uh, has gained this much interest because I think it's really important. So yeah. great to see things moving along. Definitely. Definitely. Who knew there was so much interest in tier 69? <laughs> um, uh, who's next? We got a, we got a, I think we have a few other presentations. Um, uh, August, are you, are you, are you next? Uh, yes, I'm here, but I actually didn't prepare a presentation. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, do you want to go over your proposal at all? Just kind of highlight some of the key points or? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to do a, uh, TR 69 implementation. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough of those. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, do you want me to share my screen? Um, I don't think you're going to be able to because you're running in browser. Um, oh, I see. Okay, well, yeah. if whoever has control of the screen wants to just bring up the purple website, yeah. I can go through my... It's all on the... All the relevant links are there. I'll bring it right to it. Do you know how often you plan on having um, rounds for proposals? I don't think we've we've decided that. Uh, Art, um, would you any any ideas on that? It's not a. I I, I it's think not too important. I'm just curious. I I think it's something we would like to use again. That's okay. Uh, what was the question? How, how often we'll consider these proposals? Yeah, generally. W once a quarter was our idea. Okay. Yeah. So relatively often. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. All right. So there you go. Yeah. So uh, my proposal is for a, uh, a Lucy control page to schedule internet access. It would be based on MAC address which is a feature that exists in a lot of other commercial router firmware. Usually it's a form of parental control. Mm -hmm. And um, you just basically schedule internet access by device and say this specific device gets internet access during these hours and the rest of the time it's turned off or maybe a more complicated version could add a splash page that says uh, a custom message like do your homework or whatever. <laughs> um, a lot of the a lot of the code is already written, and on GitHub it just isn't supported in the current Chaos Commer or designated driver yet. So my proposal was to update it to work with both of those and then test it and debug as necessary, but then ultimately submit to the main trunk because I think that's a feature. Well, I've heard from a few a few people who actually use that feature in other routers. So I think it would be something desirable for OpenWRT. And that's a that's it in a nutshell. It's a it's not a very large project. It was that's why also why I was asking how often the rounds happen. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, that's that's essentially it in a nutshell. Is there a? I guess I'll open up for questions if anyone has any. I think I, I I think it seems straightforward. Uh, it's interesting that we have two scheduling related proposals. Uh, it, you know, certainly it would make sense if there's any overlap to uh, to work together on those if if they were both uh, move forward. Um, one one thing um have you have you, you you said it would go inclusion in the main cc repo or do you mean the main in core or do you mean in the feeds 
Um, I would submit it for Chaos Calmer as a, it would be part of the Lucy section. So it would be eventually oh, part of the feeds. Okay, I see what you're saying. It would saying. be in Lucy apps. It would just be, it wouldn't be part of Core now. It would be in the, the Lucy section. Okay, just wanted to make sure I understood. Okay, makes sense. And then I would test it in Chaos Calmer and then Does it driver? a driver, which would be trunk. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. It, it's a it's a, it's a great proposal, and it's interesting that people are these uh, scheduling things seem to a couple people have come up with them. Uh, do we have any other proposers here? <clears throat> Didn't Dave Todd had something about the Wi-Fi stuff? Yeah, he did. I don't I don't think he could make it. I can go kind of just highlight it. It's um. I can't do it justice, but uh, Dave Tot's been, been, this has been a topic of his for many, many uh, years, the idea of improving uh, Wi-Fi uh, performance and, con and congestion controls. And um, he, he was looking for funding to help with that process, um, but I certainly cannot do it justice. Um, he's, it's, a, it's a very specialized area. It would be, I can see, very valuable to a lot of people though actually uh improving performance of wi-fi which we can all agree is often quite terrible um, um so you know any work on that would be valuable but um i'll, I'll uh, talk to him and see if we can we can get a presentation up i know he's i think he's traveling right now so he can have access to ironically a high quality wi-fi uh access point um i think so i think they've thought mentioned below on that page that he does this work via zero WRT, right? Yes, he has in the past. Um, zero WRT is kind of wrapped up, if I remember correctly. He had said um, it was originally more of just kind of a place to do some um, this improvement work uh, based on, on OpenWRT, and most of that's been either merged into OpenWRT or merged into the kernel, which indicates kind of Kind of the quality of the work he's he he does and the work he's he's done, um, but the thing he, I know he's looking for is a lot of uh, he's looking I think for funding to to kind of continue this the testing of of the work that's been done, um, particularly using the cake and fq coddle algorithms as they apply to uh, Wi-Fi. They've been applied, excuse me, to a lot of Ethernet. Um, particularly for your ISP, and, and I can testify that it has a huge effect on throughput, uh, particu and uh, your ping times, particularly. It's, it's kind of astounding how quick it is. Um, but he's trying to apply that to Wi-Fi, which is a much more difficult problem because of the, the way the drivers are designed. Um, you don't tend to have yeah, much the, flexibility. This is something that I actually worked with him quite a bit on, on uh, defining the structure for all of this. I mean, I've been talking today for a long time now, specifically about fixing Wi-Fi. And based on the experience with the, the whole buffer bloat fixes on Ethernet, um, I kind of looked into the stack and uh, basically laid out the, the, the structure or the restructuring in the code that needed to happen to even be able to experiment with things like FQ Caudal and a cake on the Wi-Fi layer, because before the, the, the whole network stack and the wireless stack just didn't even have the right hooks to be able to place mm -hmm. something in there. And I think now it's reaching the point where uh, I, I did the, the curing rework necessary for that, and Mikal from, from Tito did a prototype of FQ Caudal actually running on the Mac 802.11 layer. And I think uh, now what, uh, what Dave's work would be really useful for is to, to do a lot of research to figure out what kind of queue management algorithm we actually want to have on Wi-Fi because uh, FQ call is great for Ethernet, but it may not be the right approach for Wi-Fi, uh, even though it's certainly better than, than everything else that we've tried so far. 
Yeah, anything would be and better than what we've tried uh, so far. <laughs> yes, and this is where um, we're working on uh, the work on this uh, Make Wi-Fi Fast project from, from Dave would be really useful just to just do a lot of stress testing, do a lot of research and figure out like what would be a good candidate for a queue management algorithm for Wi-Fi to fix this problem once and for all. Absolutely. And, and this certainly has use cases outside of, I mean, I, I'm almost positive, but Felix, you can confirm. This has use cases outside of OpenWRT as well. This is Linux in general. Am I, this I is correct? Linux wireless upstream yep. work. Okay, that's what I thought. So, I mean, anything, anyone using Linux, Wi-Fi, this would have a, a significant uh, benefit. So, it's one of those difficult problems in that it um, it's a long-term problem. It's not a problem that you can get done in a short project, and that makes it hard to kind of keep everybody, uh, you know, this isn't going to get done in totally in three months kind of thing. So it, it's a tough, I, I think that's part of the reason he's, he's had some success game funding, but um, certainly not the amount he, he eventually needs for the full project. Um, so, yeah, right. But it's not only about the delivery, it's only about the process. So I have mm -hmm. high uh, opinions of the zero WRT uh, project as itself because it was formed to be uh, a testing environment and this was like uh, really communicated with the community and everybody were knowing what they were doing and what was the goal of this project and then when this uh, Ethernet uh, driver stuff was finally done it was merged back in OpenWRT project and I think that was really great. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they did some really great work, definitely. Anything else that anyone else wants to say on the uh, make Wi-Fi fast proposal? Um, it's a shame that Dave couldn't make it um, because uh, he's he's a great guy, fun fun to also listen to, and he's very passionate about this stuff. All right, uh, I think those are all the proposals. Um, so. Uh, because we've already gone an hour, I think uh, I, I did not plan on doing any uh, any of our standard business stuff. So we can uh, we can certainly do that next week. Um, thank you everyone for your proposals. Um, I, the presentations were great. The proposals have been have been have been great, and we're gonna certainly uh, be in touch on moving forward. I I think with with many of them. Um, so uh, I will uh, let everyone go and. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, bye. Over and out.